Hey there, awesome person. Did you know that you have an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled, reserved for you personally in heaven, if you are walking righteously? Today we're going to help shore up that foundation, that, that goodness, that inheritance, by giving you a little bit more information that will be another clue that brings you closer and closer to God. In a previous video, we spoke about now, Uzziah for and Amaziah. They were in a succession of kings, and we've got Amaziah and Uzziah, who both were kings who were righteous to begin with, and then fell away. Followed by Jotham, who was a king who was very righteous all the way through. Then we have this King Ahaz who was wicked. And that leads us to today's lesson. The lesson that we can learn, a lesson that we can learn from Hezekiah. During the time of Ahaz, he pretty much shut up the temple and trashed it almost completely. So Ahaz gathered the articles of the house of God, cut in pieces the articles of the house of God, shut up the doors of the house of the Lord, and made for himself altars in every corner of Jerusalem. That is an explanation of his reaction to the Lord's chastisement later on in life. God was trying to bring him back, and it caused him to rebel even further, which left Jerusalem with a really trashed temple. And this is where Hezekiah comes in, because one of the very first things that Hezekiah did is he decided that it was time to clean up the temple. And this is where we can learn a spiritual lesson from what Hezekiah did in this physical world as a righteous king. First and foremost, before we begin, let's set the stage for who Hezekiah was in God's eyes. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father David had done. So there we have what this man is doing, measured by the standards of God as being good. Now let's learn the spiritual lesson. The first thing that he did was he cleaned up the temple. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. Then he brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them in the east square and said to them, Hear me, Levites, now sanctify yourselves, sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers, and carry out the rubbish from the holy place. We know that the temple, it represents the heart, right? The heart of the Father. Now, it can also represent our heart if we choose to keep the Lord's commands and walk in His love. So with that being said, pretty much all of our hearts start out the exact same way that the temple started. Our hearts are filled with rubbish to begin with. And a lot of us have absolutely no problem throwing out that rubbish. That's what Lord, the Lord wants. He wants for us to clean out our hearts so that He can live there. That's the first lesson. But let's not stop there. Let's dig deeper. This digging deeper is twofold. After the rubbish was taken out, the next thing that happens is the priests take all the stuff that that evil previous king had broken into pieces, all the holy things of the Lord, and they repaired them. This is a picture of having all that rubbish in our hearts when we turn around, there's some reparations that need to be made within our sanctuary. There's holy things inside of us that were being torn apart and broken that need to be repaired. God is a healer, and he heals us so that we can serve him better. The same way that the holy articles of the temple are used to serve him in the service of worship. Then they went to King Hezekiah and said, We have cleansed all the house of the Lord, the altar of burnt offerings with all its articles, and the table of showbread with all its articles. Moreover, all the articles which King Ahaz in his reign had cast aside in his transgression, we have prepared and sanctified, and there they are. 
before the altar of the Lord. Fold one. Now let's go on to fold two. The next thing that happened is they began sacrificing in the temple. A good example of this is the bulls being sacrificed. A bull does a lot of work. Enough work often to feed a community. This is not an individual sacrifice. This represents a community sacrifice. The kind of work that a community together can get done. And in certain circumstances at the temple, it's the right thing to do to sacrifice a bull. And it represents that work of the community together saying, what we can get done together, we're going to sacrifice this to the Lord so that his desires can be served instead of the thoughts and desires of our own hearts. Then King Hezekiah rose early, gathered the rulers of the city, and went up to the house of the Lord. And they brought seven bulls, seven rams, seven lambs, and seven male goats for a sin offering for the kingdom, for the sanctuary, and for Judah. Then he commanded the priests and the sons of Aharon to offer them on the altar of the Lord. You see how at first we have to sacrifice rubbish. And that's a hard step to take, especially when you haven't taken any steps towards the Lord at all. But what we generally are sacrificing is complete and total trash. And when we look back at it, we say, you know what, that, that was ridiculous that I was holding on to that with my kung fu death grip. Then when you let it go, you're given treasures instead. But that's not the only step. Then there's the healing and the reparation so that your vessel can be used for his goodness and for his holiness, for his knowledge and his truth, to be used in a way that pleases him. But then after that, there's still more sacrifice to be done. Any schmuck, they can sacrifice being a schmuck, and that's great. But what about sacrificing something like a bull or a ram or your grain? Stuff that the world looks at it doesn't say that's total trash. That's rubbish. Something that does have worldly value. What about when we sacrifice that? Mmm. That is a sweet aroma to the Lord. And if you continue in righteousness, you have placed your feet spiritually, firmly, upon your inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, waiting for you, reserved 